Beverly, would you give us your full name, including your maiden name, and spell it for us, please? Beverly Mabel, I, I'm sorry. I'm my, I don't know what I should answer now, because I, I always use Beverly, but my, on, the, on the Oneida rolls, it's Mabel. So, okay, well. So I, I always use Beverly, so I'll put Beverly. Beverly Mabel Rubio Archkett. You want all right, can you spell home? all of those for us? Okay, B-E-V-E-R-L-Y-M-A-B-L-E-R-U-B-I-O-A-R-C-H-I-Q-U-E-T-T-E. Okay, and give us the date of your birth. Uh, October 14th, 1928. Oh, you just had a birthday then. Mm-hmm. And where were you born? I was born in uh, Seneca, a little town called Seneca, Wisconsin. Tell me about where that's located. I don't even know. <laughs> I've never been there since oh. I... Moved. I've seen it, but I've, I'm uh -huh. trying to re remember where, where it was at. Uh, were you born at home or were you born in a hospital? At home. At home. So there was a midwife then? Yes, because I remember my brother told me, my oldest brother told me that he had to run for about five miles to go and get the midwife. <laughs> and, I, and my mother was going to have me. Do you remember uh, the midwife's name? No. Oh. Uh, All right. Now, tell us your mother's name, including her maiden name, and then your father's name. My mother was Effie... Doc Stater Archkit. And my father was Solomon B. Archkit. And do you remember the names of your grandparents? Yes. Can you give well, them there was kids? Louisa M. Smith and uh, my, we always, everybody called him Monty. I think his name was Edward Doc Stater. Okay, that's on the Doc Stater side then. Mm hmm. All right, and then on the other side? Uh, you mean his, his wife, my grandma, you mean? Smith. Smith. Uh -huh. That was your grandmother. Uh -huh. All right. Who's your grandmother on the other side? Uh, I never knew my grandmother on the other side. Or right, what about your grandfather? I think, she no, would know. I think they were both passed away by the time I was born. I see. Um, okay. I knew two, two aunts and a... Two, they were half brothers to my father. It was um, Sarah Swamp and uh, Ida Swamp, and a brother whose name was Lomas. Lomas Swamp. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right. Tell me a little something about your dad. Do you know what kind of schooling he had? He he went to Carlisle, and I guess think he finished school there. They wanted him to stay and be a teacher for a machinist because that's what he had majored in. But he said uh, he wanted to go home by his family. So that, and he, that he, I don't know what that is, at a high school or a college, I don't know which one. So he went to Carlisle and then uh, he came back. Mm -hmm. Now, does, do you recall him speaking uh, Oneida? Mm hmm. Oh. Was he involved in any kind of uh, tribal politics or tribal government that you can recall? No. No? Mm -hmm. uh, and he was a machinist? He was by trade, but he, they, nobody would hire him because he was an Indian. So he did labor, common labor. Common labor when mm -hmm. he came back from Carlisle. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And where did he work? Around Green Bay? No, we, at that time, the first I remember... We, I remember I was living in Tigerton. Okay. Uh, and that's where we lived. And then he, after when I was about six years old, he got sick, he had a stroke. And then uh, he never was able to work after that. And uh, he, he had three strokes. Uh, the doctor said when he had the third stroke, he would, it would kill him. And uh, that's just what happened. So I, by that time I was 12 years old. I he see. died when I was 12. I see. 
So I never really knew him as a well man. I was mm. sick. He was always sick when I saw him. And your mother, what, uh, what kind of education background did she have? Uh, I think my mother finished eighth grade. Mm-hmm. You know where she went to school? Uh, not, not positive. No. And um, did your mother work out outside the home, or she went no. home? No, there were nine of us. She had plenty of work at home. Nine of you? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So she was primarily a homemaker then. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. Now, tell me the. Uh, the names of your brothers and sisters and where you fit in and in all of them i'm the youngest one not the youngest one the youngest girl i see I have one brother younger than me but i but my oldest brother is nicholas archkett uh the next one is arvilla archkett is my sister and then benjamin archkett another solomon benjamin archkett he was named after my dad <laughs> and uh then um, Levina, Josephine, and uh, uh, Elizabeth, I don't know what her second name was, and uh, Louisa, Effie Louisa, she was named for my mother and grandmother, uh, Bertina, Bertina Margaret, and then me, and then my uh, younger brother, about four years younger than me, Llewellyn. No. Now, are they all, any of them uh, alive yet? Only one sister is alive. One sister mm-hmm. left? Mm-hmm. I see. Does she live in Milwaukee? No, she lives in Green Bay. Green Bay? Mm-hmm. And what's her name? Louisa. Louisa Archquist? Effie Louise. I don't know, she, we, were, uh, we always called her Dolly. So I don't know if her name is Effie Louise or Louise Effie. <laughs> She's not, is she the one that used to work as a. Uh, uh, the the meter maid. Yes. That's oh, okay, <laughs> I know her. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, nine of you. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Where did you reside when you were small? Mostly in Tigerton and the area around there. Sometimes we move out of the town into the country a little ways, and then we. Uh, when I was uh, thirteen. We moved to Green Bay. And we lived there until I came. I, well, some of them are still living there, but I came to Milwaukee when I was 20, and I've been here since. I see. Mm-hmm. Um, did your folks uh, teach you to speak uh, Oneida? No. Did you have any idea why they didn't? Well, I didn't at the time. But I know now, I know afterwards that their language was taken away from the ones that... See, I had older sisters and brothers that went to those schools, those Indian schools. And then they came back and they spoke English. So my mother, that's why she started speaking English. And uh, my father by then was sick. He had those strokes. And so I just never learned the language. I did hear it hear it a lot. My mother had company people come to visit her and she did talk the language, but uh, we, the family, we never spoke the language. I, but I think my older sisters and brothers, <laughs> the three or three oldest ones, I think, could speak the language. Mm-hmm. Now, um, where, where you were living, mostly up around Tigerton, where um, did you have Electric lights and running water? No. <clears throat> no, they had to go to about a half a mile away to get water. Was there any other Oneida families living around you? Mm-hmm. You remember we their names? A, there was um, Henry Paulus. I don't remember what his ice, ice name was because she died when I was little too yet. Uh, Mildred and Abram Sickles, uh, Alex, and I don't know what his wife's name was either, Danny, Alex Danny, mm-hmm. uh, Minnie Robinson, and then 
there was always um, oh uh, Cornelius. Um, I don't remember what her na- what their names were. They were their first their last name was Cornelius okay. and uh, Nelson Denny. Uh, there was a Pete and Pete and Marcella Sickles. That's about all I can remember. <laughs> there's quite a quite yeah. a uh, yeah, there was a little, quite a few Oneida neighbors mm, up there then. Mm. And we all kind of lived together. There was two sections, like one section was one place, and there a row of houses was all just us Indians. And then on the other side, a little ways on the other side. Of the city, there was a the town. Mm-hmm. There was another group of was houses where these Morgan Siding? Mm-hmm. No. No? No, it was still in Tigerton. Oh. Mm-hmm. How did, did you ever have any kind of, um, oh, how would I say, teasing back and forth, I guess you might say, with the Stockbridge and and any of the uh, Menominees there? We didn't have see many Stockbridges or Menominees there. Oh, no? No. Oh. But uh, we went to a, we went to that school in Wittenberg, in Wittenberg, the mm-hmm. Bethany Indian Mission, and we'd go there every summer, once a month, and we met then a lot of Indians that come from the surrounding areas, and we met a lot of Winnebagos, and uh, then we met some not Menominees. I don't think we said Menominees there, mm-hmm. but the. The Stockbridge used to come there, and the uh, Winnebago's and the Oneidas and all kinds of, uh, all of us got together and we kind of knew each other afterwards, you know, wherever they lived. And uh, there was teasing between the Oneidas and the Pooch and <laughs> the Winnebago's. <laughs> uh, there was a Christian that used to live up that way too, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What was her name? Um, she was really old. Uh, I know Ernie Stevens' mother, our grandmother. Yeah, I knew her. And I, she lived to be about 103 or 104. She lived that long? Yeah. Oh. We went up to sing for her a couple of times. Oh. Yeah, there home. was a Christian family, I think she, that Lucy, I think her name was Lucy. Lucy. Yeah, and yeah. then her, those were her daughters, Marie, Marie. Marie and Maisie and, mm-hmm. and uh, Anna. Rosetta. Yeah. Uh, or is that how I lived up there too quite a while afterwards? Mm-hmm. Now, when, uh, when they would have their uh, funerals or wakes, did you have an opportunity to attend any? Mm-hmm. They uh, kept the, we brought the body home. And are they just, quite a bit different than they are now? Yes. In that, Tell me something about that. <clears throat> well, they brought the body home. And uh, in the coffin, it would be instead of in a funeral home, it was home at home. And then they have uh, they'd have three or about three days and nights of mo- of mourning. And uh, everybody would bring food and and something to drink all the time. And they just all stayed there and they'd kind of sing. And every so often they'd sing and then they would rest for a while. And then, but um, they didn't go to bed. Everybody didn't go to bed. There was always somebody there uh, all through the night. And that lasts about three days. What about uh, when uh, somebody got hurt or, you know, took ill? Did you have your own uh, medicines or anything that you used uh, to take care of that? Well, yes. You know, some, some I can't remember too much. But I remember that we had my when we'd catch a cold, my dad would give us um, brandy and I forgot what he put in it. Ginger, I think, <laughs> hot brandy and ginger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember that recipe. <laughs> and then uh, in the spring, you always had to have a spring tonic. Tonic, sure. <laughs> And they'd make up something, I don't know, sulfur, and I don't know what all it was put in there. It was taste terrible. <laughs> and we had to eat it. <laughs> and then uh, there was a there was a doctor, a man, an Indian doctor, but he was uh, he dealt only with uh, wheat, leaves and stuff like that, you know, uh, plants. And he uh, 
he used to take care of us a lot of times. And he lived in, he lived in he lived in Tigerton for a while. His name was Jake, but I can't remember what his last name was. Jake? Uh-huh. Oh yeah. I remember them talking about him. Uh-huh. I don't know if it was Smith or uh, but I remember him Jake yeah. though. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And he used to be real good with his medicine. He was because at one time my sister had my sister had polio and at that time they didn't know what to do with it. They called it infantile paralysis. They couldn't they they gave up on her and told her they couldn't do no more for her. And somebody told my mother about Jake. So she called him and he came over and he made her a gallon of tea, some kind of tea. And he told her to take that tea and and to give that my my sister that tea and uh let her drink it every hour. And he said, by twelve o'clock midnight he said, if she isn't better there's nothing I can do. If she's better, she'll live. She'll be all right. So 12 o'clock midnight, she got better, and she lived. And then uh, she was crippled on one leg, and uh, but then the then the other doctors start taking her to Madison Hospital and to to help that leg grow longer, and what they do to. Me. But she her after she, afterwards she couldn't hardly tell that she was crippled. She had a shorter foot, one shorter foot. <laughs> and then she lived to be, well, she lived, she lived to be in her 50s only. She had arthritis real bad. I see. Mm-hmm. Oh, where did you uh, start school? Where did I start school? In Tigerton. Tigerton? Mm-hmm. And how far was that from your house? Couldn't have been too far. We walked. <laughs> uh, I don't think it was too far. Maybe a half a mile. Mm-hmm. It was in town, so it's kind of hard to judge the distance. What kind of transportation did you have? Walking. Walking. <laughs> With your dad laid up, you, mm-hmm. you didn't have. Your no. mother didn't drive, I suppose. No. Huh? Mm-hmm. Later on, my brothers, when they got a little bigger, the older they got, cars. Mm-hmm. And you went to school. At, at the grade school up there? Or, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it like a boarding school? or No, uh, it was a regular school. I a regular school, uh-huh. I see. And uh, had a lot of trouble with because we were Indian and everybody else was white. <laughs> what but, was the ratio between Indian and non-Indian? Well, there weren't that many Indians at all. No? No. Uh, then... Sometimes we move out in the country, like I said, out out of the, to- the town, and then we went to another little school, a one-room schoolhouse, and uh, and we come to find out we didn't have no so much trouble there with with uh, racial trouble, uh, but we found out that the teacher was Norwegian, and the whole area was Norwegian, and she was related to everybody. <laughs> They were all family. Except you. <laughs> Except us. <laughs> but it just, we didn't have that much trouble out there. She was a very fair teacher. Uh-huh. There was only one teacher for eight grades in here. How did you take to school? Did uh, you like school? I liked school, yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And you went from, the, okay, the grade school, then where did you go? Well, then by that time we moved into Green Bay. And then I went to Washington Junior High School there. And then I went one year at East High School and I did dropped out. <laughs> you left uh, East High School? Huh? What, you say you left East High School? Yeah. And what did you do then? Well, I went to work for a while and then that's when I, uh, I guess that's when I came to Milwaukee. About what year was that? Let's see, I don't know. Long time, huh? Uh, I came to Milwaukee twice, that's why. <laughs> I think the first time I came was in 1948. And then the next time I came was in 1951. Uh, did you have family down here? Uh, for a while I did. I had a brother living here for a while. And that's how come I came down here in the first place. And uh, afterwards he was gone and I came back again anyway. And uh, 
what you do when you come down with it? Uh, well, I was I was on a job, and I was working, and then I went to uh, I was going I tried to go to MATC for some more classes, and uh, I uh, I had to pay my own way then though, and it was kind of hard, so because I had to. Uh, that's when I met my husband. <laughs> and what year was that? In 1951 or two, one. Huh? Yeah. And what's his name? Luis Rubio. And where's he from? Puerto Rico. And how long had he been uh, in Milwaukee when you met him? Well, he was in Ohio at first, and then he came to Milwaukee. He came just came to Milwaukee, I guess, in 1951, and that's when I met him. But he before that he was in Ohio. I see. Mm -hmm. And how did you meet? We worked in the same place, <laughs> in the same factory. I see. Uh -huh. And uh, you've been here ever since? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tried to leave, but I always come back, so I'm not going to go anymore. <laughs> no. Did I ask you how many children you have? I had seven. Seven? Mm -hmm. Can you give us their names? My oldest one is Gerald Wayne Arch. Uh, Archicot, he was Archicot. Uh, and Gail, Gail and uh, Denise, no, yeah, Denise, and then Albert, his name is Louis, really, but we call him Albert. <laughs> Louis, his name is Louis Albert. And Ronald, Ronald Roy, and then uh, Bernard Joseph, but he, he's the one passed away, he's the one. The youngest one, he passed away. And how many uh, grandchildren do you have? Eleven. Eleven. Don't ask me to name them. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and what about great-grandchildren? Uh, Sixteen, I think, the last count. Sixteen? Yeah. <laughs> wow, you're getting a, get a pretty big family here. Mm-hmm. Now, you worked, uh, well, when you're raising all of these, did you work out, out of house, or did you primarily a homemaker? No, I mostly stayed home. I get the urge to work once in a while, and I go out and work a little while, and I want to go home again. <laughs> so I didn't really work out anywhere. Okay. Now, when you were uh, in Taggerton, uh, did you, when you came to Milwaukee then, did your uh, family, the rest of your family, stay up there? You mean we we moved to Green Bay? I mean, when yeah. you moved to Green Bay, yeah, yeah, yeah most everybody else stayed. Yeah, most of them stayed. There. But I had a brother that was in, this, in, he had been in the service, and then he came out, and he was in Milwaukee, and that's who I came to visit the first time. Mm -hmm. And uh, did uh, what kind of a uh, holiday? Like a, uh, as an example, like a Christmas. What kind of Christmas uh, do you remember? Well, I remember in Tigerton, because we were very poor. <laughs> all of us were down, all, all of us Indians down there were very poor. And uh, we got, then the, the missionaries from Minnesota came to Wittenberg, to that mission school. And then they would have, uh, they got a, a sponsor, like for each of us children, each of the children of, in the whole neighborhood. And uh, then on Christmas, they would furnish all kinds of toys and everything else. And in, a, and in the spring, they gave us new outfits of clothes. And in the fall, they'd give us another new outfits of clothes. That was all through the missionary, missionary things. And, but that was for all the whole neighborhood, all the children. We all got that. So I remember we had some very nice Christmases. Cause of that. And uh, how was it in Green Bay then? In Green Bay, well, we used to all get together. The family always got together, and we'd have a nice Christmas. Kind of different than it is today, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't know. They all come together, though. We do. We all come together. Yeah. Uh, a lot of food. Christ Christmas Day, my everybody comes to my house, and. Uh, Christmas Eve, everybody goes to my daughter's house, oh. and then uh, and we all get together yet. I see. Mm -hmm. And everybody brings food. 
and uh, we have a good time. Did uh, you ever hear your parents talk about the fifty-two cents? Mm-hmm. Huh? I remember what, that. What? Uh, what? What was that about? <laughs> it was supposed to be part of some some treaty or something. They were supposed to give us fifty-two cents a year and and uh, some yardage of gingham. But I never saw that. <laughs> I saw the fifty-two cents checks. Oh. <laughs> I remember the 52 cent checks, but... Uh, but you've seen your per capita now, though, don't you? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you think of that? The per capita helps me out a lot. Does it? Mm-hmm. Really. Relieves me of a lot of troubles. Mm-hmm. What are you, what's your feeling about the uh, casino? Well, I don't like to go play there because I always lose. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, I think I don't I I think the casinos are all right if they don't keep on they don't keep on spreading them around if they keep get too many after a while it's going to be trouble between the tribes I think I think that they should keep their the casinos on the reservations or at like Potawatomi you know, they got that land tr- in trust so. But uh, about this new one coming up in Kenosha, I don't know. Uh, yeah. uh, that's that's they got to go through that whole thing, and I and I think that the I think that if it's too many, everybody's got two, three, four, five res- <coughs> casinos here and there. After all, it's just going to cause them trouble. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you uh, have a chance to utilize the services of the tribe, uh, like the health center and, oh, yes. uh-huh. and, and the facilities here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, have your, uh, any of your, your children or your grandchildren uh, had an opportunity to use the uh, education system? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's work I got, out. Uh, one, one granddaughter that just graduated and, and uh, got her, her, her uh, she's waiting to get her, she's got to spend so many hours before she can open her own business. Oh. And she's, and she's got to spend, she's got to make so many hours up of working at a regular place. What? She's in psychiatry. She what? In psychiatry. Psychiatry? Mm-hmm. Wow. And then, uh, and I got another grandson that's going right now. And my daughter was going. She advanced her situation by going. So. Well, I have really another. Well, I have another granddaughter too. She's going through. She's going to MATC for some business classes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I wish that was there when I was young, because <laughs> I always liked school. <clears throat> Oops. Um, you're retired now. Yes. Do you do any traveling? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you ever get a chance to take him back to, to his home base? Oh, we went back. We've been back there a lot of times. And we lived there for a while. Oh, you did? For about four years. Oh. Then I got arthritis there so bad, and I couldn't hardly walk or anything, so the doctor told him he had to bring me home. <laughs> oh. uh, that's so what I said, and I go to a different place trying to move somewhere else, and I always end up back to Milwaukee. <laughs> How do you like it down there? In Puerto Rico? Well, it's a nice, it's nice if you can, if, uh, but it's um, just too hectic for me, I think. I'm not used to all that noise and partying and <laughs> going on every day practically over there. And, uh, but we'd take our day off, and then we'd go, uh, go and walk along the beach. And that those days I liked, I, because we were all alone on the beach. Yeah. And if you get too hot, you can j- jump in a lake in the ocean and swim. And, and that was nice. But the rest was just too much for me. I didn't realize it was bothering me. I, but um, it must have been all that stress that was causing me to get arthritis. The doctor oh. said. The doctor figured that that's what gave me arthritis because in a way I wanted to come home and then uh, 
we were, we'd have to travel, and you travel, and so much traffic, and it's a small island, you know, everybody's traveling, and I didn't realize that it was bothering me at all, mm. but when I got home and I started driving around, riding around here, I realized how different it was. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what kind of recommendations would you give to the youth of today? What kind of what? What kind of recommendations <clears throat> would you tell the youth of today? Stay in school. Get an education. Don't use drugs. <laughs> they aren't going to help you any. Did I uh, miss anything, guys? The only thing I can think of was, uh, did you hear of Hoi An when you were out in Tigerton? Hoi An? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. We did all those things <laughs> in with the rest of the Indians. There was enough Oneidas around there to, yeah. to get it going. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I think we were all Oneidas. Yeah, I think that we're all night us out there in our, in our little village. <laughs> Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us that I may have forgotten to ask you? Is there anything you'd like to see the tribe be able to provide? Um, you know, more services or programs or or cut back on something? Uh, that they're giving you too much? Too much for a camera? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, I'm content, I guess. <laughs> well, that's all it counts. That's all it counts. Uh, I get my medicine from them. And if I oh, you use the health center? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I run a too big a hospital bill, they'll help me out and pay for a part of it. And uh, So, I don't think I... Have to ask for it. Good, more. good. Well, I want to thank you for this uh, evening of sharing with us. Mm-hmm. We're glad you could take the time to come down, and uh, uh, we hope that you'll be able to enjoy the video and share it with your children mm-hmm. in the not too distant future. Okay. okay? All right. <laughs> thank you. Alan, we'll disconnect you here for. Why don't you just state your name just so we, we've got it for the record again. Beverly Archicot Rubio, or Beverly Rubio Archicot, which do you put it? <laughs> All right, now, you've got some additional things that you want to share with us. Yes, for one thing, you asked me how many children I had, and I named them for you, and I forgot the name of one. I left out one daughter. <laughs> She's my youngest daughter, and her name is Marlene. And, and how old is Marlene? Uh, I think she just turned 50, yeah. Okay. And then my youngest son, and I got a son younger than her, and uh, he's uh, right behind her, 49. Okay. And then I don't know if I mentioned my son that died. He was 19 years old when he died, and he was, uh, he would be about 47, 48. Too, but he's uh, passed away when he was 19. We also failed to uh, ask you about your uh, your artwork. Mm-hmm. When did you start that, and what kind of work artwork do you do? I started in about eighty four or eighty five somewhere around there. Uh, I went to a school. Uh, it's for elderly. It's an elderly school, but it's a. Uh, it was. Uh, uh, they didn't just teach you crafts and things like that. They taught you all kinds of different things, whatever kind of teacher they could get, they they let them, they would teach that. And so they were teaching art, and so I took art class. First I had took drawing classes, and then I had to, then I took uh, art, and I started, I started out with watercolor, and then I shifted to um, acrylic. And I used to go to a, an art club, I belonged to an art club in Wauwatosa, and I decided uh, that it was too much work putting, getting watercolor ready for the shows, so I changed to acrylic. 
and so I've been doing that. And before, and I had taken a creative writing class at the same school, and I was so I started writing, and I wrote a lot of poetry. Uh, it's been published in the Gali Vizaks and in the uh, Indian News from up north, and uh, and then uh, I had a. Now they have that book out, that booklet out of of the uh, Indian writers, and I and I uh, sent some in there, and I've they've been published in there too. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I, else? I, if any interesting picture you got in here about the fourth chief, the pupil oh. you did there. Oh yes, one re one picture I won a blue ribbon. In Illinois, uh, it's a picture of uh, the Black Hills, but instead of the the presidents in there, I put Indian chiefs in there, where the presidents were. <laughs> so everybody liked that, and then they, I won a blue ribbon for it. <laughs> and uh, what else? Have I got? Uh, okay. What chiefs did you put in there? Uh, if I can remember them now. I put. Um, I researched who were the important chiefs that ran that protected the North, the Black Hills, and so I didn't just put anybody up there. I put Red Cloud, uh, uh, Crazy Horse, Black Hawk, and I, I can't remember the other one. <laughs> there were four, but Black Hawk. There was no pictures of him, but I found a book that described him. And so I just tried to do it like the picture described. Would the other one been Sitting Bull? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Sitting Bull. Uh -huh. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. you coming down. Thank you for letting me come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's worked out real good. Oh, no, uh, one more thing I got to tell you, too. I was saying I did use that... Uh, the school funding from Oneida. Mm -hmm. When I was 48 years old, I went back to Marquette, and I went there for a couple of years. To I didn't finish that either, <laughs> but I didn't go a couple of years. Oh, mm -hmm. that's good. Okay, now I guess that's it. Okay. <laughs> Just a second. Tell us what. Tell what? You wanted to Hello. drop down a little bit? Oh, oh. Hello, in Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. Hola. Okay. We've been married for 50, going on 53 years. 53 years. Mm -hmm. And what's your husband's name again? Louis. Louis. L-U-I-S. Okay. Do you have anything to say to the people back home? Uh, to the people back home? Well, I, am, I love all of them, very nice people there. About this sweetheart, I am very proud. I married to her. Very happy. Uh, I learned so much. The in our in her culture, I, I learned very much. Uh, those fifty-three years have been very enjoyable. We do a lot of traveling. We have been a lot of places, and uh, we do a lot of praying. From here, we're going to our church. We belong to the Church of the Lutheran Church, Lutheran church of the Great Spirit. And uh, we visit the church very often. We are a happy couple. You look happy. Thank you. You do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.